Uh, the other factor, and I'm going to number three because we already covered concentration and surface area, is uh, one factor that affects energy of reactants is introduction of a catalyst. And uh, we want you to define it as a chemical or species that offers a new pathway with lower activation energy. So you can't say it just lowers activation energy. It's actually offering a new pathway, reaction pathway, with lower activation energy. The second uh, attribute of a catalyst we want you to remember it is it doesn't take part in the reaction. It can be retrieved. Uh, it does not take part. in the reaction uh, in the fashion that is not used up and it is uh, recycled or retrieved. Uh, there are a few examples of catalysts and the reactions that you should know as IB students. One of them is Haber process and that's when you have uh, when you have nitrogen and hydrogen reacting so nitrogen gaseous plus hydrogen gaseous and it will give you ammonia gaseous this has name of Haber process after Fritz Haber uh, the catalyst uh, I can put it on top of the arrow or I can put it as reactant it's iron powder and I can retrieve it as the product so this is what we mean by catalyst now if you look at the energy diagram for this reaction so you have energy on y-axis you have reaction coordinate on x-axis this is exothermic reaction so reactants are up here products are down here the normal activation energy for this is this hump here and up here you have your activated complex so this is EA in blue and I write it without catalyst now if uh, iron was introduced the new pathway is having a lower activation energy the smaller EA, the faster the reaction. So this is with catalyst and it's, it's faster. Another uh, re reaction that you should know is known as contact process when sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen to give you sulfur trioxide and then eventually you add moisture to it and you have sulfuric acid. Uh, since it's making contact with the with the catalyst, it's taken name of that the process itself, not a scientist. Now the catalyst here is vanadium 5 oxide, V2O5 solid, and you retrieve it on the other side, V2O5 solid. Now in these two cases, these two catalysts are also known as heterogeneous catalysts. So let's just have that distinction going. Heterogeneous catalyst is in different phase, phases state of matter than the reactants. You see that the catalyst is solid in both cases and your reactants are gases. And usually it works based on a phenomenon known as adsorption. When the reactants get uh, sort of have affinity for the surface of the solid and they break their old bonds and form new bonds. We will talk about it eventually, but you should realize that. I want to look at one other reaction, uh, so I go to the next slide. 
a decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. This usually takes place with any sort of catalyst as a, uh, even the dirt will do that. So any contamination works as a catalyst to decompose into oxygen and water. I will give you first the example of a heterogeneous catalyst. This time I write it on top. It's MnO2, which is manganese 4 oxide. And this, you should remember, this is gas that's solid. So this is heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. Now the same chemical could also have a homogeneous catalyst. Uh, sorry, this was aqueous, not gas. To decompose it into liquid water and oxygen gas, what I can introduce is potassium iodide in form of aqueous, so Ki aqueous, and on the other side I will retrieve it, Ki aqueous. This time I have a homogeneous catalyst which is in the same phase as the reactant. So catalyst offers a pathway with lower activation energy. Don't say just uh, activation energy lowers.